And we are live. We're currently here at the Q&A Critique number 78. Welcome everybody who's connected. Very happy that you're here in the voice chat. We've got Plebes, we got Shmuel here, who's the special guest of today. And we've got uh, Marty and, uh, and everyone else who has connected. As, um, so today has lined up uh, a lot of uh, interesting art. I've decided to take on a new initiative here in the Beef Artist Discord community to take a look at people's art submitted in the finished art chat or in the work in progress, which means um, with some permission, we can take a look at your art, praise it, enjoy it, and take a closer look. And fortunately, for those who can't make it, which would be there's Mr. Crusader. And um, here, let me just look at the name. Um, I did a brain fart. Haley. So they can't connect today, but we're going to record this for you for later. So we're going to take a look at your art, Les, which he kindly shared the blend for, which I really like. It's a really cool little piece. Haley has a question concerning modeling speed in the professional field. Then we have some art pieces by Mr. Crusader. He has been doing a number of art pieces here in the server, which have been very cool. So we're going to take a look at that. And the consistent style and little nuances that he has been perfecting very well. We also have a surprise piece of art by uh, Sonduku, which I really like, which we can see on ArtStation. We're going to take a closer look. And before all that, we have Shmuel here today. And at the end of it, as bonus content, I'll be sharing some references to some grease pencil brush settings and also discuss and talk a little bit about the future of the grease pencil presets and defaults for beef artists coming soon so today's very packed it's a full hour lots of good art lots of interesting things and here we are with shmuel so if you're ready shmuel you can open up your microphone and let's uh let's begin um just to give you a quick introduction shmuel has been talking here before and he has been learning geometry nodes for the past year and a bit. And he has also started creating a mid-level to high-level geometry nodes pack, which you can purchase on Gumroad. So this pack is specifically tailored to curves at the moment, and it comes with documentation soon. But it is going to be expanded with more things later. So how are you, Shmuel? Uh, thank God. Uh, pretty good. Excellent. So um, I mentioned in the chat here in the threads and other things online that you have been working on some Quaternion nodes. Can you yes. tell me more about this? So I don't know what it was that got me thinking about it, but I've always like heard about them and like, what are these things? I know recently I was, I was a little sick, so I was home and I was like, uh, I don't know. Something inspired me. I don't. I don't know what it was. Got my brain to just like. Maybe I should make some quaternion rotations. Maybe. So um, so I I made them. Yeah. So I, I I knew zero about about any quaternion. It's not like I knew the math beforehand. Yes, I um, I don't know anything really, about quaternions either. Could you tell us? Well, I know. I don't. In Blender, we I have. I don't even know that well even. I've made quaternion nodes without actually knowing really well what they are, <laughs> but um, I don't know. Uh, most places kept talking about like k hat and i hat and I don't know these imaginary numbers, and that that's just and I don't I don't understand that. Nobody explained it well enough to me. Um, I watched a bunch of videos and different stuff, and I'll explain more of the process how I figured stuff stuff out. But um, yeah. Uh, you don't have to know all that extra math to to know how to do math. It's kind of weird. They they add in extra steps for no apparent reason. It's probably it's the theory behind how it works. But um, yeah, you don't you don't have to have so many extra numbers. It's uh there's it's instead of um, having uh, regular Eulers, which is three numbers, you have an extra you have an extra number. And apparently that's the real number. I don't know. It's kind of complicated. Yes. But, um, from what I understand I, here in the I don't bones. even know yeah, yeah. I, I don't even know that that much really about the inner workings of it, 
But, All right. I think you're selling your quaternion yeah. nodes very well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, uh, but uh, I'll, I'll show you uh, how they work and some stuff that I looked at once I made them. And it looks to me that they're very similar to um, axis angles. You know what those are, right? Axis angles, yes. Because um, yes, I have so... a bone here loaded in before Addis or Blender, and I can see I can switch between quaternion and Euler. So with Euler, I have yeah. X, Y, and Z based on degrees. But when I switch to yeah. Quaternion, I also get a W, and it's working with floats instead of degrees. So, yeah. so if I so the only do the X, it rotates in the X, but if I change the Y, it changes kind of like the pole vector of this whole system. Yes. It's similar to so that. I would say it's most similar to axes, axis rotation because I'll show you the conversion. It basically is very similar to like the W being the angle, but it's a little bit different than that. That's, 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 that's just something I looked at and I saw, I was like, hmm, that's interesting. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll share my, my blender screen. Right. And I'll, I'll show you the reasons behind it, um, like reasons why you would have it. Okay, so let me just pop you out. A... It's still loading, one second. And also welcome Jaybar. And J Tree as well. Nice to have you here. And also, thank you for reminding me to start the event on Discord. <laughs> Nearly missed it. Okay, so, I can see it. Can you bump the resolution to 1080 per chance? Oh, you are. Um, am I? I don't know. I'll I'll redo it. I'm pretty sure. Uh, went to whatever the max should be. Hey, Marty has but, shared a uh, Wikipedia article no, concerning I, I, I cannot since since uh, this this chat this um what's it called surfer doesn't have nitro. Really? Oh man, I should boost it. Yeah, uh, I can show you the file if you want. But um, I oh, share your screen. No worries, okay. we'll work with that. You just have to zoom in quite a bit. Oh, all right. Um, okay. So I created a Euler visualizer to show what what there's there's two main problems with with Eulers, and there's more reasons for quaternions than that. But the two main reasons for having quaternions is the two is because of the two issues with Eulers. Um, one of them is solved. I'll, I'll explain. So the first one is gimbal lock, and the second one is interpolating between two rotations. So the way gimbal lock works is the way rotations, at least in Blender, work. Um, there's different orders for them, um, but the way it works in Blender is first goes X, then goes Y, and then goes um, for first goes Z, then goes X, then goes Y. Why and I'll goodness. show you how it works. For example, if I if I turn the Z this direction uh -huh. and then rotate it around the Y, you see the Y is relative to where the X was. Yes. I meant the Z, so it's relative to where the Z was, and now. This, the X is rotating relative to the Y, which was relative to the Z, okay? Um, there comes a problem when you're rotating stuff. If you rotate 90 degrees like this, you see the problem? Yes, I These see it now. These both in the same, same direction. There's more situations that you'll get to the Kimball lock, but this is the easiest to show, and it's just... Like and you, it's you a big problem, rotate. especially with rigging. Yeah, so... With quaternions, which um, I actually created, a, I created a lot of nodes. I'll, I'll go through a couple of them. I, wrote, I created a quaternion rotate node. Um, though you can rotate, you can convert it to an Euler, and it would work perfectly fine, by the way. Um, so with this, if I rotate it on this direction, I can also rotate it all the directions. But it's very not very intuitive necessarily how to rotate them, and I haven't gotten used to it because I've only been doing it for like two days yes I've, I've tried to animate on quaternions and the problem is it's very difficult to understand what's happening or how to do it correctly in a predictable way yes. so sometimes so, you just i work with my animation in euler mostly and when i hit yeah, gimbal so, lock i do corrective rotation <laughs> with a secondary hierarchy yeah. so yeah um there's um there's also an advantage to having to internally using quaternions as opposed to internally using Euler's. But for the for the for the gimbal lock problem, it doesn't help you necessarily. 
um, because, um, yeah, but, um, because it's, it's less intuitive, but, well, well, sorry. It doesn't help you for the Euler problem because if you're using Eulers, you anyways get gimbal lock, even if you convert it to quaternions afterwards. Yeah. But okay. the op it doesn't work the opposite direction. Um, yeah. So th this is the first reason why you would want to use quaternions over Eulers. And the second reason is interpolating between two rotations. Um, Mixing so, rotations. Uh, yes. So over here, I'll use basically this, this, what this node is. It's mix Euler, but it really is mix quaternions, but I just converted them to Eulers and back. So that internally it's, um, it's mixing it uh, with uh, Through quaternions. With quaternions. Internally. So, That's um, very cool. Um, yeah, so, so this is something that, that would take advantage of using quaternions. Um, I'm not sure if, if there's actually a way to do sphere proper spherical interpolation between Eulers, but w from what I've seen, nobody tries it because it doesn't work. So um, okay. I'll take the word for it. Because just mix, I, I think there might be a better way than just mixing between them. So for example, I have rotation this way. At 90 and degree, I, mi nine, minus 90 degrees at x, and then you have a rotation of plus 90 degrees, and you mix in between yeah. the two. Yeah. Okay. So if I just use a mix to mix between them, you see it, it goes pretty well, but it, it kind of like goes sideways first. And a curved line, uh, similar to a plane flight. Yeah. Around the globe. Um, but if I move to quaternions, they will vary. It is a straight, pretty straight line. The line is linear. That's very good. I've also created um, cubic and quadratic ones. That's very which nice. Which happen to also just use linear interpolation internally, which is um, interesting. I think there's other methods of doing it, but from what I've been able to find, this was the, the simplest thing to start with because I haven't found anything else yet. I so didn't do that much research, but it's okay. I, mean, I did enough research. So going I did back to research, it was a lot of research. Yeah, yeah I bet you. Um, just to go back to the bizet, so the basics of quaternion and how it works. How did you build your quaternion rotation inside of geometry <laughs> nodes when we only have three vectors, three floats for a vector? Um, I'm using colors. Colors have RGBA. The fourth float. Yeah. Oh. Um, actually, I'm not the one that came up with it, even though I can't believe I didn't come up with it. It was pretty, pretty like, whatever, simple to think about, especially for me who like, likes using um, stuff for things they might not be um, meant for. But, yeah. Um, Elazer from, from Arendelle's Discord actually told me, he's like, quick tip, uh, you can, because I was using a float and a, and a vector, and he's like, uh, can you can use a can use a color? I'm like, oh, you're right. I could use a color. So yeah, makes it much cleaner than using two outputs and inputs. Yes, because you have the alpha channel stored in there. Excellent. Yeah, the thing is, uh, I have to do the math manually, separate it for the math. Um, well, yeah, this this is not a good example, but I'm saying anytime I have to do just multiply something, uh, or whatever, I can't do it with the mix nodes set to. The math operations because it doesn't actually affect the alpha. So, yeah. Yeah, you have to split it per <clears throat> channel and build it through the channels, I assume. Yeah, you just I just separate them and then do the math. So the math yeah. to do the quaternion, uh, what's the foundations for that? Um, to do. Um, you're saying for the rotation or just yeah, just the, the quaternion, quaternion rotation itself and the basic foundation. Okay, so the so here's, I honestly, this is like the one thing I haven't looked into that much. Um, I'll explain in a second. So this is a quaternion rotation node that uses a quaternion and turns it into a rotation, as opposed to um, other nodes that just work with quaternions, which, um, yeah, which you can do and then just convert it to an Euler afterwards. <clears throat> yeah, sorry. Um, so. The way it works is actually, 
I actually can can change this to a different that I made. Um, called conjugate. I don't even know what that means. Yes. I'm just copying the words that it says. Um, <laughs> it basically means like to invert. Whatever. I'll 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 just show you how it is now. So basically, you rotate it twice because there's a thing about rotating vectors in 3D with a 4D with a 4D um, rotation. So you actually have to rotate it twice. You have to rotate it once and then the opposite direction. And the reason why it doesn't cancel out each other is because it matters what, what operation, which direction you rotate it in. So if, you're first, if it's first on the bottom and then on the top, it's, it goes in different, it's a different rotation because quaternion on multiplication, basically you're multiplying it in both directions. Um, and I don't know what this math is. I haven't, looked, this is one of the things I haven't tried to understand yet. It's just an equation I got right. from a really good YouTube video. I'll, I'll share the, actually the, 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 guy, uh, the, the channel. The guy actually explains stuff pretty well. And there's a, um, he has a better video that's not in his playlists about, um, quaternions, but I'll, I'll post right now in the chat. All right. Uh, this guy's channel has a lot of cool math stuff. Thanks, um, but the real main help to doing this whole thing was actually ChatGPT. Um, I had like long conversations of just asking it what different things are, and it it's really much better than like any other thing. I also use Google and looked up other other things as well. But um, it was a real help. And uh, before I get into that, I'll just show you the third thing you would use quaternions kind of for um, mm -hmm. is adding axis angle rotations together. Um, yeah, because you can't really add two axis angle rotations together. So you either have to convert it to a matrix first or to a quaternion. And I just chose to use a quaternion because I haven't looked at the matrices yet. And uh, you just turn them both into quaternions and multiply them. and them out and this i think this is really useful for robots and things um, because it's going to help create some more understand. solid joints joints that you can trust uh not even that it's for example let's say you want to have a constraint um and constrain something to one axis and then another axis you can have two instead of rotating it once and then a second time you can have all your rotations together in one spot and you can keep adding rotations together one after another, and then it goes to one axis first, and then it goes in the next axis. Um, an easy example is just regular X and Y, but that's that you can use or this for anyways. But um, I'll, I'll do this. So for example, what do you want to do in the Z and then in the Y? Saying, so this, this is basically something, um, right, um, so the Z would go first. And then, and then the Y. Um, yeah. But uh, th th this is a very simple example that you can use Orlis for. But in other, other, in other rotations, like, so you have a mixture of different axes that different joints are connected to each other. And you could have, like, uh, just add different ones together. And it to might create a third useful. joint or normalized joint or multiplied joint. Very interesting. Yeah. So it's actually, uh, I went through actually with, with the regular mixing quaternions, I went through actually three different equations. The first one was from the, the guy, um, George Rod Rodriguez's channel, and it was very well explained, but it, it, took the, it took the approach of using just regular linear interpolation, like um, um, theology, I don't know how to call it. Uh, whatever. Um, the the way the way you think about um, just regular linear interpolation, and then use it for quaternions. So the way regular linear interpolation works is you get the difference between two numbers, and then you multiply the difference. It's, it's very simple. It's just it's you add, um, and you, then you sub what well, you subtract, and then add it back. And I'll I'll show you that really quickly because me talking is just going to sound really not making a lot of sense. But um, I'll here have two vectors, um, and I'll mix between their locations. 
So I'll use an offset. I'll be able to add it so, back into the offset. So here, I'll just show you the... the I didn't actually go, go, end up going with this method, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Uh, but here, I'll just look at it. So let's say I'm going to move from there and move to there. Right? So what you would do is you would subtract it and then scale it. And I'll explain to you how this works. And if this gets to a value of 1, it goes to there. And it's a value of 0, goes to there. How does this work? You basically just take the difference between the two numbers. With subtra subtracting them, takes the difference. For example, mm -hmm. if you have uh, negative 1 and 5, the difference, if you subtract 5 from negative 1, you get 6, right? And that's just the difference between two, the two numbers. So then if you add that number back to it, then you'll get, that, they get to there. And just scaling it says how much along that line do I want to go. So he did the same thing in regards to quaternions, but the problem is it always went counterclockwise, which is not what you want. You want the shortest path. So then I work with ChatGPT and I find two different met methods. And for some reason, it's, it gave me a, a better, a better um, answer when it wrote it in Python. I'm not sure why, but uh, huh. it gave me a better Python answer. That's interesting. Because um, are these nodes? Are you planning to release these nodes with with your pack that you've been currently building? You, uh, utility yes. nodes. What time yeah, the, frame? These will be under the fields. Pro the fields. Okay. I'm gonna try to. Um, so, I'll try to get them into the next time I do like a, like a release in the way that basically it'll be a temporary category, just having these nodes in it. And then later on, I'll reorganize them. For example, I'm not going to have all, all these in. The, I'm not going to have all these in the same category later on. But right now, I'll have them all in like a category called quaternion rotation Euler or whatever. Um, because I would have, for example, these would be in the math in my like a fields math section. These would be under converters because this is an order to quaternion, uh, to quaternion axis, to axis quaternion. To, yeah, uh, all the. And Euler to Axis and Axis to Euler, um, and so the, these would be in like uh, converter. This would be under Math, and these would be under Utility because they're mixed nodes. Um, and these maybe this would be under Inputs or some or something like that. And this would also be under uh, Utilities and stuff like that. So yeah. Um, also, the main the main thing I that's the main thing I wanted to show off. Just one of the two th things I found very interesting about this is one, they're pretty uh, quaternions are pretty interesting and cool. And second of all, ChatGPT is very, very, very helpful. Um, and I feel like more part of the the, the what's it called the, um, the AI rush. That's what you call it. Um, yeah, yeah, the next gold rush is um, the AI rush. That's right. The giants are fighting right yeah. now. Google's um, barred against Open ChatGPT, bought by Microsoft into Bing. That's super exciting. Yeah, so, um, sharing here my conversations, um, and yeah, I have a whole bunch of these things, um, but yeah uh so what most people use use it for are like let's say the the poems this and that or generating code and then putting it into blender um i like generating code and then putting it into nodes um because code is very very straightforward compared to just regular um equations so like it gives me equations necessarily will i understand but with um just with um with uh, code, it's very actually it's pretty simple um, because it, it literally just it shows you exactly what it is. It it, it uh, this times this times that, and it says arc cosine. It doesn't show me any symbols, nothing. It just shows me the exact exact thing. Um, yeah. Um, and I've also had it give me something in C plus plus because I actually like strongly typed better than dynamically typed. 
also especially for geometry nodes because uh, you can understand how it, it relates more more directly. Yes. Because geometry node centers also are very much around types. So uh, you can see like very well, oh, this, this is a float. And oh, what it returns, oh, a scale. oh, it returns a quaternion. It's a dot. It's a quaternion. Yeah, it's so much more readable. Yeah. Um, though, when I compared the results, I found that um, the... The Python one it actually gave me first was much better because it I didn't have to normalize it twice, and it it just used less math calls so less math nodes. So it's uh, uh, slightly yeah. more performant in that regard. Yeah. Curious. Um, so I'm just wondering if it's a, if it's a Python thing or just the first answer type of thing. And There's a possibility that explain. Python has a lot of back end happening. Meanwhile, C++, you really have to really define it. But it shouldn't make a difference in the equations it's giving me. Yeah, true. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so one of the great things about ChatGPT is it's, it, it, it's responsive and you can ask it questions about how it did things and why it did certain things um, in a different thing I was using like quadratic or cubic interpolation I'm like or no um sorry that's something else no in, in, in a different in a different one I think one of the C++ ones or something yeah over here um it was just doing regular or over here I'm not sure it was one of the things I was just using regular interpolation so it's a spheric and I'm like asking it why I did that and it's like oh true I did do that and here's why and it, it it really answers your questions and it gives you um yeah explains stuff very well um, and another great thing about it, over just like regular Google searching things, is a, diff a different day I wanted to just double check that, that a, a, um, a normal tangent, the same thing as normal cross product tangent, and Google wasn't giving me any answers. It was giving me like, what is the normal of a curve? And this is a tangent of a curve. It wouldn't tell me the right answer. So I asked GPT, Chad GPT, and it gave me the wrong answer. But then I told it, what it did wrong and then it gave me the right answer so it's something you can teach and train like and have cool. a conversation which is very interesting yeah it's very very useful so th this is my take on using using ai as just like researching things and asking it questions um not not not, not that that's my only method of, of researching things i also uh, i also google things read articles and watch watch youtube videos but um uh -huh. it's much it gives you a much better um experience uh, for a lot of things that are much more straightforward that you would have to like google a whole bunch of articles and look back and forth try to figure out what the heck is going on and this you just ask it like what's going on and it just tells you so that's that's my take on the the ai rush type thing. yeah i agree I mean, with you in that changes. regard when it comes to ai assistance with searching the internet and digesting it and having a conversation with it i think it's revolutionary in that regard yeah, i remember I find it more useful, coding with people Sorry, well. I, I also used it to help me solve a bug with some code with a conversation because I had like a random code call and then I had a talk with it and asked, what could this mean? Why would this happen? How do you think I could fix it? And I fixed the bug within half an hour with yeah. previous knowledge of knowing what the whole thing was. I felt empowered because I had yeah. some way to actually save time digging through websites and doing experiments and testing and trial by error yeah this also shows like my, my, my journey on quaternions is even if you don't really know math or like you never learned this subject before this and that mm -hmm. you can still figure stuff out and make nodes even if you don't understand it completely or even like you never learned anything it's just uh the internet has so many good resources and now, especially with the ais it makes it 10 times better or more that um you could really just do a lot more things um yeah and you don't have to be like ah oh, it's, it's too it's beyond me i can't i can't do that yeah you, uh, you, you become a lot of times yeah you lose fear of the unknown because now you can know it which is kind of nice yeah 
Okay, so I have one last question for you, Shmuel, just to clarify. Yeah. Um, the art piece of today was actually a piece that you created, and lately you've been using some other art pieces as well with Jen, which I thought were very good. That was also the alternative splash. But I wanted to ask you, um, with your node pack and your future projects, what is on the horizon? What's your next coming feature or piece that you're going to work on? Um, I think for like the, the asset pack? Yeah, it could be, or a piece of art. Or the next um, group of nodes that you plan to, to focus on? Yeah, this was kind of like a, a flute type thing that was really supposed to be working on documentation. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I did, I did, I did get, get through like a full subsection with documentation. Uh, like, I don't know, six something nodes. Excellent. Um, I'm looking forward to reading this documentation so much. Yeah. Um, a lot of those were like simple, so it, it, it was easier. And then some of those you had to add more explanation, but uh, yeah. Um, so I really need to kind of go get back to finishing up so I can finally just release an update, which would have um, basically the nodes that I already have in there improved, plus a couple other new nodes that aren't too complicated. For example, there's a bug with, um, not really a bug, there's a, uh, one of my nodes was not very performant, and I, I, already, I already came up with a solution, but I didn't, like, a, I don't know, a while back already, even before I started documentation. Uh, but I, I haven't put it in yet, and I need to put that in. And then I... Yeah, I need to update it um, with, with that and a couple other bug fixes I did, as as well as some new features that I put in since I was... Uh, like, uh, one day I was supposed to be documenting one node, and instead I ended up document... Or I was supposed to be doing documentation, and then I ended up just upgrading one node, like, to the max, and finishing documentation on it. But it was it was definitely necessary, because um, I feel like that node needed needed that to be to work properly. It's a, it's a roll-up curves node. So now it actually looks like a proper rolling up, and you also have the option to have like the way looking fake where the radius doesn't change. I shoot on whip uh, a, a couple examples. Weeks ago, well, we could do. Oh, you did this. Yeah, if you want it. Um, saying so if you want to see it, uh, I could probably link it. It's, uh, it's just a video showing how it works. It's pretty cool. Sure, I'll share the link later. Um. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So okay. th that's that's the plan. I might. Maybe do a pro, like some extra nodes here or another node there. Uh, the next thing I do want to look at is since I found this guy uh, Rodriguez, I actually want to I want to watch finish watching. He has a, he has a more updated video about quaternions that I might learn more from, and, uh, and as well. Um, sorry, just the noise is not getting to me. It's fine. Um, and yeah, and he 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 has a a video about um matrices and i really don't know anything about those so i think the next thing math at least thing i'll i'll look into is matrices because i don't i know i really don't know what they're useful for etc so yeah i'll see that i just posted the link to erendale's chat where i used the, the rolling up spines it just are it's just a nice nice node but all right yeah. okay good well, i'm glad to hear this okay cool so yeah, I hope oh. it didn't get too complicated. <laughs> Actually, it wasn't too bad. I mean, we covered the the foundations of quaternions to a degree. The lower level maths is oh. probably beyond this, but we, as long uh, as we can reproduce one, it. There is one other thing that I could show you to explain it. I forgot to. I forgot. I was something I was thinking about. I mentioned it, but I hadn't. It didn't demonstrate. So I'll show you the conversion from Euler, um, from axis angle to quaternion and back. And that might help, that, that showed me that it might be pretty uh, more related than I think it is. Or, I don't know, maybe I do think it's that related. So, so you took the quaternion to the, axis angle node group and the axis angle right. to quaternion. Yeah. So, right, so if you look at from axis angle to quaternion, it's literally just putting the, the axis into the, into the, the RGB, um, RGB into X, into X, Y, Z, uh -huh. and then W is is just the angle divided by two, and then you unangle it. Uh, Curve sign it. Take gets rid of basically it, it it removes it it turns it from an angle to a 
um, what's it called, to, to just a, a value. And except the only difference is you scale it by sign over here. You multiply it by sign, okay? And then in the, in the reverse, you're, you're dividing it by something interesting here, which um, I'll show you in a second. But if you look at the, the opposite, what happens to the W is the R cosine, which basically is you're making it from the value to an angle, and then you're multiplying it by two. So it's basically the exact opposite of what, of what you did beforehand. But you're just unangling it, it, and then and then you divide it by this, which I don't know. It's the it's the um, I think it's like the magnitude of something. I don't know what why you're one minusing it, but um. So you're kind of, I'm not sure exactly what this is doing, but what, basically what this does is it kind of makes it more so it doesn't deform. So I, when, when I compare it to what happens when I turn this off and on. It made the mesh, it's basically kept its rotation, but it kind of deformed the mesh. So this is just something, maybe you can understand how it's kind of similar. Because I think these, uh, um, the X, Y, Z have a lot to do with the axis, and the W has a lot to do with, with the rotation, with the angle. But there's a little bit something different here. But that's, yeah, that's something interesting I found while working on it that might help explain something about quaternions and how they're similar maybe to axis angles. Yeah. That's really good. Okay. Well, thanks, Shmo. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to see the updates to the pack, to see your documentation, to see you polishing and throwing in your research into these notes. I'm sure in the future it will save a lot of time to a lot of people, including myself, when it comes to working these things. Excellent. You do have to keep me posted on the next pack. So we have to move on to the next section of the show because time is ticking, unfortunately. But thanks again, Shmuel. And I'm going to move on to a question asked last week about um, uh, through Haley Twist Up on Discord. He asked a question concerning uh, modeling speed. Let me just confirm what it is. His question was in simple. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Okay, here's the question. So let's say you have a job as a modeler. How long should it take on average to model something on the job? So the, uh, the answers that we had given him inside of the chat was about context because modeling can be very quick or it can be very short so with this particular scene for example that was done by les with this piece of art um sometimes we have competed or we had competitions in arendelle's discord server which may start up again in march or april where we had one hour to build a scene entire scene an environment or a model or a prop or a hero or something and we had 45 minutes plus another five ten minutes to render with lighting shaders materials and everything and within that one hour with other models and things like this which could be this cartoon shape if you know how to do it it could be very quick and you can do a whole number of them or not or you could spend a few hours to create a generator to create many different types of models or not. But when it comes to modeling, it really depends on the project and really depends on the budget that you have for the project. So a general rule of thumb when it comes to modeling average speeds in the industry is make sure you stay within a budget. So be clear with the person you're working with to know what budget do you have. The budget meaning how many hours are available. If you're working six hours a day, how many days do you have? And what is the project that you need to do? How many models do you need to do in that amount of time? If you model one and you measure yourself, maybe it could take you two hours to do. But in that regard, you could say, okay, so in two days I have 12 hours, I could do six models. But sometimes a model could be more complex and sometimes it could be not. So in general, you just need to measure yourself and... Uh, make sure you got to plan the time and budget for those particular models. So there is no standard for your modeling speed, but the general idea uh, when working with somebody in the industry is you need to be careful with how you set your expectations 
and fulfill your expectations. So if you tell your boss that you will finish the model in two days, well, you've got to make sure that your budget, your time budget is enough and your skills to model in two days. So set your expectations, know how fast you can do it and deliver on those expectations. And if you can, do it before then as well. That's also very good. So Haley, thanks for that question. I also wanted to share this art piece by Les, who's also can't connect it at the moment. And for later, I do have a question for you. How did you do the shader? Looks like felt almost right here in the Terminator. It looks really, it looks really nice. Yeah, it looks very good. I love the colors, I love the design, and this felt shape. It's actually, it's a surprisingly simple shader. Yeah, it's the, looks like it's the normal. Yes, yeah, the normal's broken up into this felt looking shader. So you have... What's interesting is that he's not using, like, he's using a normal map node. Pretty much, with a noise texture. Distortion and negative. Space. So it's, it's a very effective technique. Looks really good. Sometimes less is more. I would have definitely overcomplicated this. So good work, Liz. I really love this piece. And now that our pieces that we have is um, done by Mr. Cabbage here in the server. So let me see if I can um, load up those pieces. And also, Liz, thanks for sharing this piece. Another question that we have for you later is, how did you model the body, uh, the base of the body? The star shape, I suppose. What modifiers do we have? We've got the solidify modifier, which brings out the shape. And then we have the star shape. It's a pretty clean model, very well done. So in the server here, we've also had a lot of work done by Mr. Crusader, and this piece is loading up here. There we go. So Mr. Crusader has had a number of pieces, including hallways, rooms, uh, lighting, roof, floor. It's a style of art which has also some lens effects and cameras. It almost looks very, looks very real. And it comes with these, these vibes and these videos as well. So let me just load up the video. Open in browser. Download. And I just wanted to, um, the now the questions that we have for you later on in time is how you mentioned that you used Ian Hubert's Shakeify or Camera Shakeify add-on to get the movement. So that really adds to the purpose. So this world of these corridors and these hallways, I know there is a, a certain meme or something concerning this, a horror game, I'm not sure what it is. But do you have a particular story for these worlds? That's a question we're going to have to find out for another day. And another art piece that we have showcased today is also by what I wanted to mention earlier, Sondoku on our station. Um, I asked this question earlier on in the server about how he did these volumetrics inside of the model and the animation of the tentacles. And you've been using this fake volumetric plane system and these textures. So this is another piece that I wanted to showcase, which I thought was a very interesting technique because it works very well. The tentacles in the jar. And it's very interesting. You used the tentacles were created procedurally using geometry nodes. Well done. Model and blender and everything else with substance painter rendered in EV. So I guess if you're using EV with volumetrics planes, you could get your fake volumetrics. Clever. Might have to try that out. And the last little tip that I have today before I have to go back to work is um, the future of grease pencil and 
various pencil packs. So I've done a little bit of research in German and with um, the grease pencil lately. And I've been working on a number of different defaults, which I thought were a little bit lacking when it comes to Beefy Artist. And I had a look at some brush packs that were available on Gumroad and also on the Blender Studio. So the ones in Blender Studio are behind a paywall. But I found maybe five, about half a dozen packs of brushes that you can download or purchase. So the first pack I wanted to share with you is a pack by a YouTuber. Oh, I forgot her name. Seems. I'll find it here. Grease pencil. So the first brush pack is done by Pepeland. He's done this for the Blender and he called it the Brush Pack version 2 for Blender 2.9 or above. So Pepeland, he's this brush pack is actually a very good one and I highly recommend it. So basically we have the brushes for clouds, grass, two types of grass, some leaves, and we need some rough sketching uh, pencils, which are very, very nice. So when it comes to grease pencil, some things that I'm going to be working to bring into Beautiful Artist is the defaults. So the first default that we need to keep in mind is the camera position, the world lighting, and the world uh, setup, and the color format. So when it comes to the size of a pixel, um, for example, if I move a brush to 20 pixels wide, when you draw in 3D space, these 20 pixels could be any size inside the 3D space. If I'm here, these 8 pixels, how do we know they're really 8 pixels? Are they really 8 pixels? So in this case, when you're looking down from the camera, from the top view, um, the idea is that in the future these defaults will have the camera set up to a plane which is at the same pixel dimensions of your world. So if you're at 1920 pixels by 1080, your camera will be this, and the world plane will be this. And this is so when you draw on that plane inside the 2D space, you'll be able to have the actual pixel width based on the world space width. So that's one thing I want to work with. Another thing is I want to include some better brushes similar to these ones. These are very cool. I did have to tune these brushes quite a bit because a lot of them use the, the line method. When you have a grease pencil material, when you use lines, um, things don't look so good. So switching it over to dots makes the brush textures feel much better. Other brushes done by other artists also I'm using as inspiration to, to bring in and see what type of movements we can do or shapes. But there's still a lot of work to be done. So in the future, the idea is that I give you some good defaults where the colors are also set to standard in the default mode because RGB in colors you want it to be as they are. The lighting of the sun lamp is also straight on, so it's very, um, so you get your blacks are blacks and your whites are white. So if I switch over to white, uh, here we go. I can actually see white and in the black I can see black. And from there, I can like change the lighting to what I would need it to be. Another thing that I wanted to build in per default is that the cursor is set to the plane level so that when I'm drawing on my brushes like this, I'm actually able to, without needing to set it up, I can start drawing in 3D how I would need it to be based on the position of the cursor. Oh man. Question. Yes. Some of these brushes look like they're 3D brushes. Is that the case? When it comes to dots, um, the dot brush basically makes these curves in space and it places a dot, kind of like an interpolated dot, around that brush. Ah, so it faces the camera. So they're a bit like billboards, permanent billboards, but orientated to uh -huh. the curve. So you can see them here, they're rotating at the moment right now, based on the camera. That's a little, bit, a little bit buggy, you know? Yeah, that would be a bug. Did you report it? Uh, I think it's already reported. People have been wanting to rebuild the whole entire engine. 
Uh, that's pretty cool. And then the line method just looks like a ribbon. Pretty much. So the line method, um, the issue with line, like if I switch this to line instead of dots, the issue with line is that now it becomes a ribbon. And the ribbon has an alpha. It still has 3D shapes on the ribbon. But as you can see, I'm still getting gimbal luck. And dots give me more uh, a different type of um, 3D volumetrics to that shape. When it's a ribbon, the problem is, is the ribbon's always going to try face the camera. So you get these random twists, as you can see here, with the line. Just a curve. Right. Yeah. It can only rotate around around the x um, around the tangent axis. Yeah, exactly, it only rotates around the tangent, and which means the ribbon also doesn't give me the sprite randomization, and kind of like it stretches the sprite of the brush along the line. So some of these brushes that were built on earlier versions of Blender, uh, kind were of built. just like a U a curve with a UV map now. Pretty much, yeah. So basically the difference between using curves and the material to do this, Grease Pencil just has different drawing tools to help you do the job, including a really good sculpting, um, poly editing, so I can like select and move it around, copy and paste um, different parts of the curves nice and easily. So the, the topology just looks like a regular line, but it's it, it kind of like instances. It's yeah, there are like dots. dots. They are dots, dots and lines. Right. That's, oh, it's, you can, I feel like you can do like geometry nodes. You could. Cool. You could technically. The, uh, the only difference though is that we lose onion skinning. And yeah. No, we, I, I don't say you should. I'm saying. I think it if would be cool. Easy. It would be a good alternative because geometry nodes are like having grease pencil inside of geometry nodes is very powerful. <laughs> But in this case, we can only use Grease Pencil as if they were objects inside of it. Like converting it to curves and curves back to Grease Pencil and vice versa is not possible yet. Pretty cool. So the idea is I want to improve this. I also have Iyad currently working on adding the brush panel to the side here. So that these brushes in this list, the more brushes that I add as a default, will make it harder to access. So as you can see, this panel has three, row, uh, three rows and I can't scale it. So if I have more brushes, so for example, let's, um, let's import a new brush pack. So if I'm in my scenes in Grease Pencil and I use uh, Sophie Jantac, that's her. So the watercolor brushes on Gumroad, which she has, are for free by Sophie Jantak. She has these brushes that she has created. Which are which ones? That's the problem. There we go. She has four of them. So let's append them. So I've added these brushes to the list. But the problem is... There we go. I have... Too many brushes for the list, which means I'm not sure which brush goes where or how. So that's one of them. Can you share where to get these brushes? Yes. And let me grab a link. So in the future, I want to, uh, we're developing these panels so that you can see these brushes all listed in this panel with up to three columns. You can zoom in or out, scroll them a lot easier. Keep it on the top level with the icons. But I may have to build an add-on to do that because a lot of these brushes don't ship with icons. So if I had an add-on that says load the icons for the brushes, then that might work. But that will have to come after I finish my current contract. But these are the plans that I have. I've been doing a lot of drawing exercises with Grease Pencil to test it out every day. For example, this piece here. Let me load it up. There you go. So I do figure drawing, so I've been testing different brushes and different techniques, trying to get a better idea of like what or how to do these drawings. And which is kind of nice because unlike other 
through uh, 2D software. In this case, I can relight this entire scene with a different color or lamp or vibe or depending on what I want to do. And I can also use modifiers on these things as well. So if I select this, I could also use, I have a rim light and I can make the rim light blue or like kind of like this light bluish color and change change the whole lighting of the actual character um, real time and animate it real time and all of that and sculpt it. So I just need to make the defaults a little bit easier. So the, the good thing about Krita, for example, is you pick it up, choose a brush and you start painting. That's it. The idea is I want to do the same here where I can pick it up, choose a brush and start painting and have a predictable canvas to start painting. So if I'm back into my 2D animation mode, pick it up, choose a brush in the camera mode and start painting. And it'll be one to one pixels. So a 70 pixel brush or a 300 pixel brush would be 300 pixels on the canvas inside of the camera. So that's the idea. And let me just dig up the um, the brush packs that I found for free on Gumroad, so you can have it on the links. Pepperland, you'll have to go to studio.blender.org and you may need to pay for a subscription to use those brushes. But um, they are available. Pipelines and tools. If you go down to tools, there's a cloud rig, as a pipeline bin appear, where is it? Naming convention, pipeline architecture, rigging. I'm not sure if it's still available yet, but we'll see. But here in Gumroad, let me take a look at my library. Sophie Jantek is the first one that I wanted to share. Here's your curve pack that I purchased. Okay, so there's Katie Sketch, Sophie Jantek, which has two packs. Those are the ones that I found, and the one by Pepperland. And there's a couple others that you can find other software for inspiration but where is the pepperland one there we go so here is sophie jantek post that in and here's katie sketch katie sketch has um he also uses tv paint and other software so the one for grease pencil you may have to dig a little bit deeper but there are a lot of tools that he has there Where is the grease pencil one? Here it is. Which is also free. And Pepper Lance. Let's see if I can find them on Twitter. The best pencils are the ones that I like from Sophie. She's done some really good grease pencil tutorials, tips and tricks, and things like that. She also has a default, which I think would be good to take a look at. And with that, that's the Q&A of today. Um, one, one more question. Is there a difference between regular um, texture brushes and grease pencil brushes? Yes. So the big difference is if I'm, let's take a closer look at a scene. So on just recently on Twitter, I published this, um, this uh, skeleton or skull from a goat or a ram. There you go, Daniel Martinez. Let's uh, upload his link to you. He's one of the developers of Grease Pencil. So the big difference that we have with normal raster drawing and grease pencil drawing is that everything in grease pencil is a vector. It's basically, 
It's like you're I was, using. I was referring to. I was referring to the brushes as if, like, yes, yeah, so you make a texture brush. Are they? You could it be used both for texturing, and um, for grease pencil, or are they exclusive to each other? To each other. Ah, uh, for painting on textures, texture brushes as a different engine. So using this grease pencil to texture paint, I would have to create the same brush in the same settings for texture painting elsewhere. So I'm, I'm just wondering, the creation process, is it like the same thing or is it completely it's different? It's similar. So if, but you can't have one brush used for both. You can. Not you at the moment. You could in the Not future. That's what, they're, that's what they're trying to do. But right now, for example, you have textures and I have the ability of tiling it or keeping it random or stenciling it inside the texture paint mode. There's a lot more options. The stroke, we also have dots and we also have lines. So that's the same as be as using the grease pencil, except, but we have an additional one, space, airbrush and curve, which grease pencil does not. We also have um, randomization of the strokes, but in this case, the randomization and textures is only jitter. Meanwhile, with blue grease pencil, we have a lot more randomization with different things. So grease pencil has more randomization. Textures has more methods. Uh, the stabilization of the strokes, grease pencil has a smoothness option, which is which are very good. Meanwhile, the texture paint does not. And you sure. Uh, concerning smooth, you have stabilizing the strokes by radius and a factor, and that's about it. But when it comes to grease pencil, my stabilization is based on angle, factor, hardness. I also have post process. Wow. It has smoothness by iteration, subdivision, simplifying. I can trim the ends. I can add thickness and outlines. The strokes. So you would have two separate libraries: one for grease pencil and one for texture painting. For exactly. Pencil. Yeah. I would have to work the both. Another thing I wanted to tune as well is the curves, because right now the default curve is um, linear, but typically it's much nicer if you have a curve set to a slight curve like this, more of a sign. And other things like that is also, I'm debating if Grease Pencil should start in vertex paint color mode, so you can pick a color regardless of the material, so that I can stick to one material and just change the color because typically and with grease pencil the default is you start with a material and if you change the material or or unpin the material I could uh, the brush changes completely so if I change it to this gray brush it's like it's it's different right but it's the same brush so that's you, a you could always change vertex colors later yes so, for example, if I don't like this purple color, I can go to my vertex paint mode, choose another color, like red or green, something opposite, and I can actually start painting these materials. Though it's a little not performant, Jesus. I can also do the same in vertex paint mode. In this case, it might be good to simplify the brush stroke, so clean it up and let's simplify it. Delete loose points, delete duplicate, recalculate the geometry. Oh wait, I'll have to be in edit mode. Select the way of all the faces, and then we go stroke, point, stroke. Simplify. Do a fixed simplification, and then paint. And it's a little bit more performant. In this case, it's good to use multiple layers. This is just one object for everything. So vertex painting is not very performant, and I've got to keep that in mind. Anyway, so these are things of the future, and that's it for today. So thanks again, Shmuel, and thanks for explaining the explanation of the Quaternions.
and I bid you guys farewell.